Loud Harleys. Hey guys, today we're down at Maitland Toyota. The Burton family have been nice enough to let me come down today and film in their showroom, film in their car yard, and uh, go over some of the lineup that Toyota currently has on offer for us off-roaders. And this video is gonna be why I think the Tundra would suit right in that lineup. So guys, what's Toyota best known for? Well, reliability is one thing. Not too many times Toyotas break down. And I'm gonna show you that at the end of the video on a Hilux that we currently have on the farm. The thing just doesn't stop. They're known for the simplicity and they don't tend to change their models as much as other manufacturers. They keep them simple, they make it work, and they're just really good vehicles. So of course, here we have 79 series Land Cruiser. One of the most toughest trucks in the world. Will go anywhere. This one's obviously just getting ready for a customer to pick up. It's got the uh, the snorkel, new set of uh, rims and tires with some Mickey Thompsons. All the bar work here from uh, Iron Man 4x4, um, which is currently right beside their dealership here. Got some nice spotlights on this big girl. Winch. Don't see too many single cabs in the touring touring market it's more dual cabs obviously for families and things like that but this has got a big new custom tray on it a few lights there at the back but this this truck here is basically what put Toyota on the map this is one of the strongest trucks you can buy to travel through anywhere Middle East Australia Outback anywhere you want to go this truck will take you there so we've got the 79 interior here. It's very basic, guys, the interior of the 79s. So they have updated the dash and everything, but even the door cards they still look original as what they did back in the day. So here we have a dual cab 79. Pretty much fresh off the boat. Still getting, uh, looks like it's going in for like pre-delivery still got to have the snorkel fitted but this is one of Toyota's best sellers as well dual cab I only ever used to make the single cab and then um, they actually went to South Africa when they were developing this one and there's a shop over there that actually builds the dual cabs and that's where they uh, then finally decided a few years ago to build a dual cab Land Cruiser so currently, Australia's number one selling ute is the Toyota Hilux, closely followed by the Ranger. Nice little tidy white Hilux here. And I really, I do like, actually like the new updated Hilux. It's actually a really nice truck. Give you guys a quick shot of the interior. Very nice interior. Leather seats, pretty fancy. That new in display. So there's never actually been too many trucks that have knocked this bad boy off the pedestal. Ford did it there for a while, but the Hilux quickly gained back traction and then was the number one selling, and still is today, the number one selling ute in Australia. So, we're going to look over a few things regarding the Hilux, the 79 and the 200 series. Um, we might dive into the Prado a little bit, but it's not too many people that use the Prado for touring. So it's more the touring market I'm trying to go for and let you guys know why the Tundra would fit in, I think, so well to Toyota's lineup. The closest thing that Toyota has right now that is similar to the Tundra in way of design, uh, feeling to drive, um, etc., is the Land Cruiser 200 series. So we've got the 79s, we've got the Hilux, and we've also got the Land Cruiser 200. Why would a Tundra fit into that lineup when there's a pretty big variety of vehicles there to choose from? Now, I'm not going over Toyota's entire lineup. They still do make a few other four-wheel drives like the Fortuna and the Prado, but there's not too many people that choose those for touring and chops with trays and canopies and things like that. It's more so the Hilux, the Land Cruiser, and the 200. So 
There's a lot of people that actually chop the back end off a Land Cruiser 200 series and the reason is they love the look of the vehicle, they love the way it drives, the interior, that luxury feel that you get. It's got a bit of a wider body, more so than what the Hilux does. It's got a V8 diesel engine. Um, the Hilux doesn't have that. Um, so that's why a lot of people go to that and then chop it. Um, the company in Queensland is called Creative Conversions that actually do the chop and will then put a tray canopy. They fabricate the whole back of the truck. I'll put a couple of photos up now of some of those trucks that have been done. So then you'd say, okay, well, why don't they go for a 79 series? Well, 79 series, great truck. It'll take you anywhere, it'll do anything. Um, great payload. You got the Troopy as well, that's available as a wagon. So why wouldn't you use one of them? Well, I think it all comes down to some people just like that luxury feel when they get into a car. And that's what the 200 offers. It offers you that nice leather, luxury, new car feel. And it has the V8 diesel where the Land Cruiser is still really old school. It's really basic on the interior like I just showed you before. Nothing's really changed in that truck too much. So the way the market's going, well the way I believe it, in my opinion, is it's going to touring V8 engine, obviously diesels, but with a luxury feel about it. And they want to tow more, they want to take more with them on their trips. They just want that whole package and currently the only way to get that whole package is with an American truck at this stage. So you can get things like a V8 engine, you can get the payload that you need, you get that luxury feel of leather interior and things like that, where the 79 just doesn't offer that. So the Land Cruiser 200, I absolutely love them when they're done up, when they're done up right, with bar work, lift, 35s, set of black methods, roof rack, light bars, they are one of the sickest looking trucks out. The trouble is, is there a wagon? That's the only issue, is that they're a wagon. If Toyota was to somehow do a 200 in a ute configuration, they would sell like crazy, I believe. Now with Ram and the 1500, I think they're chopping into a lot of that market where people may consider buying a 200 and then chopping it, and the cost just completely blows out. So I think with the, with the Ram 1500 being so affordable, Yes, it's a petrol, but they've just released the diesel engine. So I think that's chopping into Toyota's 200 series market a little bit there. And I think Toyota wants to try and regain that back. So from what I've seen online, car sales, car advice, there's a lot of articles coming out that Toyota Australia is chasing the Tundra to hopefully fill that void. So with the Land Cruiser 200, I think next year they're actually going to a V6 engine. They're ditching the V8. I don't know why, but I'd, I'd say it's due to emissions controls and stuff like that. I think they're going to a twin turbo V6, and that's what's online at the moment. Across the whole board, there's a lot of people that are just ditching sedan-based vehicles. We're just not buying them anymore. As you've seen, like Toyota shut down their plant in, in, in Australia. Also Holden shut down their plant a few years ago. So we're just not buying sedan-based vehicles anymore. We're buying either touring vehicles, large family wagons, SUVs, utes. That's what we're buying right now. So they're moving to a more streamlined across all countries. Everything's gonna be a base platform in either left or right-hand drive. And that's the only way that I think a lot of car manufacturers are gonna sustain themselves is kind of doing a base platform instead of having individual vehicles for different countries. So why do I think we need the Tundra? I think we need the Tundra because there's that little void that's, that's currently missing with Toyota. So you've got the Hilux, fantastic truck, been the number one selling ute in a long time. You've got the, the 79 series, they're a fantastic truck but they're very basic and you've got to spend a lot to make them a good touring truck. Then you've got the 200 series like you can see behind me unbelievable beautiful to drive luxurious v8 diesel everything you want it just doesn't have a ute back that's the only downfall of this truck if toyota could either bring the tundra to australia or make this into a ute you could get this as a cab chassis i think they're going to be on a winner a lot of people out there saying oh combustion engines are dead they're the number one selling vehicles the biggest engines and the biggest payload, the biggest towing capacity, are the number one selling vehicles in Australia. So how is that dead? That doesn't make any sense. So I guess the big question is, would I buy a Tundra or would I buy a Land Cruiser 
in a cab chassis platform? The answer is yes, yes I would. If Toyota Australia was to say we are bringing the Tundra 2020, 2021, 2022, whatever it's going to be to Australia with a V8 diesel, I'm going straight, I'm coming straight here to Maitland Toyota, putting down my deposit. That's the truck that I want. I want it for the reliability, I want it for the simplicity, I want it for the V8 diesel engine. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm after. And I think a lot of Australians would be considering that too. If they're either looking for this, that they'd want more of a Ute place form, like the Hilux, but don't really want the 79 due to the fact that it is very old school. So, I think the market's there for the truck. The Ram 1500's proving that. A lot of people want that bigger engine, bigger payload, bigger towing capacity for touring, going away, towing a caribbean, towing a big boat, things like that. So I think the Tundra would work. So I've thought about it for a while. What colour would I get if I was to choose the 200 in a Ute configuration if Toyota ever did that? Out of Japan, I think that would be sick. Or if they were to finally bring the Tundra here in a right-hand drive, chuck a V8 diesel in it. Even a V6 twin-turbo diesel, I think it would be a sick engine. And that's what's apparently going to go in the 200 in the future. But as in colour, I really like sandy taupe. So if they were to bring sandy taupe colour, like the desert tan they have in America on the Tundras, um, I think that colour is slightly different. It looks similar in pictures, but I think it is a slightly different colour. But that's probably the colour that I'd go for if it was an option. I'd definitely go for the sandy taupe. Now for pricing. So where I think it should be priced is between the Ram 1500 and I'd say the 2500. So the 2500 are about 130,000 and then the base model, I think it's the Express Ram 1500 is around 79,000, 80,000, something like that. And then you kind of go up in price from there. So if you could get a Tundra from Toyota for even around 100, 110, I'm, I'm putting down my deposit right now if that's, if that's a possibility. So in saying all that, the 200 series and a Ute configuration or a Tundra, I think Toyota Australia would have a, have a really good selling vehicle on their hands if they were to ever do that. So we've got a Prado here. We'll take a quick look at this Prado. So the Prado is like a smaller version of the 200. A little bit less of an engine, but it's, it's more of a, a family, top of the top of the line family SUV. So definitely a nice, a nice rig. We used to have one, we had a 120 series um, a few years ago. So that was our family vehicle. Back before I was doing YouTube and I was working in the mines, I had a, I had a Prado all set up, 120, with light bars and stuff like that, and mining tape and all the rest of it when we're doing our mining, our mining company back in the day, so. So that's a little bit of a wrap up on what I think Toyota Australia should do with contemplating this Tundra coming to the country. I think if they could either do something with the 200, if the, if the Tundra is not a possibility, if they could do something with the 200 where it is a Ute configuration from standard, I think they would be very much on a winner there. So, in saying that guys, yes, if the Tundra does come to the country, I will be buying one. I will be buying it in either a desert tan or a sandy top colour. And hopefully the pricing is going to be around that 100, 110,000 in the price range. Although I'd say it's probably going to be more like 130,000 if they were to possibly be able to do that. So anyway, guys, I'd like to thank the Burton family. I'd like to thank Josh Walker, the general manager down here, for letting me come down and film today. And yeah, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. See you. So before you guys go, I promised that I'd show you a Hilux that we have on the farm. So this is it. Apologies if the wind's pretty loud. It's pretty windy today, but um, <laughs> this is a 97 Hilux that we have here on the property and the thing just doesn't stop. It's uh, we, we uh, paint fence posts and stuff with it and run around, uh, take the trash out or garbage, rubbish, whatever you want to call it. But um, she takes an absolute beating. We'll come around this side. This is the best side. An excavator <laughs> spun around my old man took the side of the truck out and this thing reminds me of the one that uh, Top Gear destroyed but <laughs> they're just a bloody awesome truck I'll, uh, I'll pop the bonnet and they just don't stop guys they're just solid solid old trucks this is why I love Toyotas
And I'll show you one more before we go, a Land Cruiser that we also have here on the property that'll start straight up. Actually, let's see if this thing starts. Let's see if it's gonna make me a liar. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Crank straight over. 97 Hilux. How many kilometers are on the dash? 430,000. 770. <laughs> Nearly half a million. So, yeah, guys, they're just awesome trucks. This is why I love Toyotas, and this is why I want to buy a Tundra, hopefully, if they come out in Australia. Let's go look at this Land Cruiser. Right, guys, here she is. Check out this old girl. She's been on this farm for a long, long time. Got so much character about her. We just use it to get around the property and stuff, moving things around. We usually have a uh, water pod on the back, but we just put a uh, couple of new tyres on her. The other ones were pretty worn out. But, guys, literally, <laughs> a Toyota's body will rust away and the body will fall off the chassis before the engine stops running. This big girl still runs. So much character. She looks sick. Unfortunately, I can't start it because the battery's been taken out of it. But um, I know if it did have a battery in it, she'd crank straight over because I moved it over here a couple of weeks ago. Fired straight up. All right, guys. That's a real Land Cruiser. That's what put them on the map. For being one of the toughest trucks in the world. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video today. If you haven't already and you want to, please like and subscribe. And I'll catch you to the next one. See you guys.